Hello everyone. So today we are going to be rendering some pork fat. So we're going to be making lard. This is very, very easy to do. It is a long, slow process. I've only just got a little bit of pork fat here. Yes, it's still got, still got meat attached to it. So you're going to have basically just only a few parts. You're going to have your cracklings at the end when we get through with this and which is going to be the cooked meat and then you're going to have your tallow. Uh, some people have mentioned, hey, if you put water in your pot before you get the process started that uh, you can avoid your oil burning. People, please do not do that. Water is going to be an impurity which you have to remove later. Um, if you have ever cooked like a chicken or something and put it in a container and you pull it back out and you see that gelatin looking stuff on there, that is going to be what happens if you add water to your oil and all of that has to be cut off and removed and it's waste and why do it? Um, if you just cook it low and slow, there's not going to be any problems. Um, some people have said that it has a smell to it, which yes that can happen if, um, if you're cooking it too hot. I don't mind the uh, smell of cooked meat. I, I think that's awesome. But the smell of burning oil on the other hand, not so much. So if that starts to happen, you can open a window, light a candle. I guess lighting a candle really is helpful. Um, I've only got just a little bit here, so I'm just going to chop this up with a knife in some little, little tiny pieces. The smaller the pieces you make it, the higher your, uh, your fat yield will be in the process. Um, another thing you can do is find one of these handy little doodads. This is a hand meat grinder. Um, basically all it does is it clamps down to a table and uh, then you have your handle and you've got your screw that holds your handle into your little grinder there. It's just like a little screw. So <laughs> you turn that and it pushes the meat through here and out. So um, you want to make sure it's got all of its parts. I'll show you this little thing. This uh, little wing nut ends out holding your handle in place. So if you don't have this, then um, and you're not going to have a little meat grinder that works. This is like a 1930s style. See? So, literally, uh, your handle will come out without those parts. This just helps to grind it up even smaller. So will just go ahead and put this all back together again. Just like so. Um, because I have only so little of this, I'm not even going to bother with using this, so we're just going to cut it up into little, little pieces. So I'm just going to go ahead and get started here. And uh, what we're going to do is we're just going to put just a little bit of that fat in the bottom of a pan. Um, just I should probably get that stove burner going. So as you can see, I'm just chopping this up. Go back over to my pot here. And I'm just going to turn it on to about four. And uh, that's what I'm going to leave it on probably the whole time this is going. So low and slow. It'll look like the oil, because the oil will hold heat very, very easily. Um, so if you have it on a low temperature, it will look like it's starting to simmer. That's a good thing. You just want it to just slowly simmer. And uh, all that's doing is removing some of the, uh, any fluids that are still into the meat and the fat. We'll just kind of cook those off into steam and those impurities will go away. And uh, just got a little handful right here. I'm just going to go ahead and just add a little bit of that into my pan. Just kind of scatter that around a bit, just like so and it's already going to start melting, which is what we want. The smaller the pieces of the fat, the more your fat will melt and you'll have a higher yield. Now I've already weighed all of what I've got here available to me and I have 8.4 ounces. Now the, but when you render it down you will lose some of that weight because again some of it is a little bit of that water, some of it's meat which will like this one will be turned into cracklings, which you can use in stew and soup, things like that. So, um, yeah, just cutting it just in little, little pieces. I know it's 
It's kind of a tedious process here, but this is how you get started doing this. I'm just going to kind of keep at this. And folks, while you're doing this, make sure that you keep your fingers in a safe <laughs> distance. And make sure you use sharp knives so that way your knife doesn't roll off the object that you're cutting and accidentally cut you instead. That's never fun. So I'm just going to start adding these little pieces right in there. And as I add more, it's this is going to be cooking for like a few hours. But I see it's starting to get a little bit of oil in there now. And I'll be back when all of this is cut up in little, little pieces. And um, here's some other pieces that I just got done. I'm going to add those in there. I'm going to let that start to melt. And as soon as I get all this cut down, and this starts to really get to melting and doing its bubbling thing that it does, I'll show you more of what to do from there. All right, I'll be back later. Hi everyone, so uh, my camera ended out, the battery died in it, so I'm now using my phone. So you will now see the bubbling I was talking about. This is the bubbling and sighing. All of that has, um, the impurities and stuff are all bubbling out of it. So that is reducing any water, any blood, any whatever else, any impurities is just coming up to the surface and bubbling out. I still have my burner at a low temperature as you can see right there. Um, if it starts to smell when you're doing this process, you can open a window, you can light a candle. Lighting a candle does help reduce the smell involved. So I'm going to move stuff around. I've injured my back, so sitting down is kind of nice every once in a while. Um, this fat can be used for candle making. It can be used for soap making. It can be used as a skin moisturizer. There's lots of things you can actually use this for and it's wonderful. Um, this has, I think if I remember right, more omega-3s and fish oils in it than a salmon does in its tissues. So this is really, really much healthier for you than say a Crisco. And But you can use this in place of Crisco. If you cook this at too high of a temperature, instead of your lard being a nice white or cream white color, it will start to turn like a tan or, or even a brown, so you don't want to burn it. Um, if you are using it for making pastries, which is wonderful for pastries from what I've heard, the hotter you cook it at, the more your um, donuts are going to taste like pig. So um, <laughs> don't, don't do that. Uh, this process works for any kind of rendering of fat. Uh, I guess back even in the middle days, they they used um, hangman's grease. Yeah, if you can use your imagination, you probably already guessed that they made hangman's grease from the rendered human fat from criminals. They thought, I guess it had some medicinal properties to it, sinner's grease or whatever they called it. But it helped save people from sin or something, I don't know. Pretty crazy. But um, this stuff's all animal stuff we're supposed to eat. So um, here's the grease. It's all getting all nice. And here's the cracklings, which is the meat. You can use that in a stew. Uh, you can give it to your pets if you wanted to. Put it on a salad. Lots of cool stuff you can do with that. I'll be stirring this every 10 to 15 minutes. So making sure it doesn't stick on the bottom. And as soon as that bubbling and sawing is all done, then I know I can remove it from the heat and strain it off. But again, it's low, which you want. It looks like it's boiling, but or simmering, which is simmering, but it's not on high. So remember, if you if you put it on high temperature, you are going to burn your oils, which you definitely do not want to do. So I'll be back. This is probably going to take. I don't know, an hour or so to cook this little bit up. Um, so I definitely want all that bubbling done. So that's a sign that all the impurities and stuff are cooked out of it. And uh, when that's done, I'll strain it off and we'll re-weigh it. So remember we had 8.4 ounces 
total in here and I will lose some of that but uh, we'll separate it off into cracklings. We'll use a cheesecloth which actually I just found an old t-shirt that was all good and clean and everything else and strain it off and we'll go from there. I'll see you guys back later. Well my camera hasn't had quite enough time to um, to recharge and the meat looks really well cooked so it's not sighing as much as it had been so I'm gonna go ahead and call it done so now I'm gonna go ahead and strain it off so here I've got my t-shirt remember be careful when you pour this in guys because that oil is extremely hot it's gonna go ahead and put that all in there I scrape some of that off on the inside I set this off to the side. I'm just going to go ahead and shake some of that out. Now, normally if I had both my hands handy, I would smash this down with that spoon and make sure all that oil is off of it. So that way I can keep it just a little bit lower. So then there's my cracklings. And here is my oil. And there's the cats in the background. <laughs> so um, I'll probably be using this maybe to make some soap or something or other. And I guess maybe this one will be called Screaming Cat Soap. I don't know. <laughs> but um, yeah, you can you can use that oil. I'm probably going to have to render it out twice. Which usually happens. You can kind of see how it's got some, just a little bit of debris still left in there. So I'm going to clean that out. Of course... If you're using it for soap making, it doesn't really matter. But, um, yeah, I'll just clean that out. i use a second straining for it, and I'll be back. Hi, everyone. So my video camera still has not um, finished charging, so I'm still using my phone. Now I'm going to mention something that I was not able to in the last one. Uh, you can use a ladle or a spoon or something like that, especially if you have a larger pot than what I had here to uh, to strain off your tallow or your whatever fat you're using that you're rendering. Um, it will prevent splashing because this oil is extremely hot even at a low temperature. Because again, you saw how it was bubbling and hissing and sighing and doing all that great stuff. So, um... Definitely safety, safety, safety when you're straining this because that's one of the most dangerous parts about this and when accidents are most likely to happen. So keep that in mind. Be safe, everyone. So this is this is really well cooked. This is probably going to actually be used as uh, croutons on the top of salad or something like that. And here is my lard. And you can see it's still got just a little bit of, of impurity still in there. Um, I'll strain it off with a coffee filter to get that last teeny little bit, but again, using the same process you saw me use here. So that's really all there is to it. You can render any kind of fat the same way, and uh, you'll get a good yield. Now this I got 2.9 ounces in the oil, and this one I got 1.9 ounces in, uh, in my cracklings. So I, I did lose quite a bit, but uh, in the long run I have, you know, food for my table, for my family. And then I have lard I can cook with, or make candles out of, or whatever the heck else I want to use it for. So that's really it. That's really that simple. And uh, yeah, so it, it got done bubbling and sighing, so you saw that in the last video. And this is it. It's really just that simple. Hi there everyone, so this is the very last of it. Um, just wanted to show you how white that um, pork fat does get when it's all set up and solidified. That's a little bit of the impurities that I'll have to, you know, remelt, scrape off. So, um, yeah, that's just very, very little bit. There's no gelatin or anything like that on there. This can actually be used to make soap. I can make a small candle out of it. This is what I've got. And these are the cracklings. So, um, just wanted to show that last very little bit with you. And when you cook it low and slow, you'll get a nice white 
color like this one is. And uh, I'll see you later. Have a good one.